former officer Kim Potter. We wanted to know, what did you think was the most compelling piece of evidence? Still with me, trial attorney Jamie White. And Jamie, let's get to our first uh, comment of the day. It comes from Shannon Jackson. Shannon says, the videos of the traffic stop. And I think that's fair. I mean, clearly they're important. And as we talked about earlier, uh, this jury has unfettered access to them. They can watch them as much as they want. We question. I'm not sure who that helps. I think the longer you look at them, and in, in total, it helps the defense because it helps, uh, uh, helps the jury understand the chaotic nature of the situation. But if they go at it frame by frame the way the state wants them to, it helps the state. I, no, I, no, I agree with you, Michael. I, I think it helps the defense, despite my political statements earlier about, you know, maybe changing policy going forward. At the end of the day, you know, the more you review those videos, I think that reasonable people can find that things escalated to a point that uh, led to her making a decision that, while it may have been wrong, it was not criminally wrong. Yeah, and Earl Gray's point that he made during closings that Dante was the one that escalated it can be looked at and, and looked at as something that's uh, valid under the circumstances. All right, let's go to yeah. our next comment from Kathleen McKinnon. Uh, she says, Kim's Potter's, Kim Potter's testimony, that was the best evidence in the trial. And Kathleen wrote her own statement of, I shot him and I am going to prison. Wow, okay. So people looked at the tape uh, there, Jamie, and looked at her testimony and said, her own words that I'm going to prison suggest that she already knew that she did something wrong. I don't agree with that at all, though. I don't, I, I don't either. I, I think that, you know, this case was not based on admissions. This was based on things that occurred that nobody was ever going to dispute. Her reactions after the fact, I mean, I think you can make an argument that, you know, there was such a culpable moment in her, in her, in her world that no one could argue that what she did, she was trying to uh, hide things or, or lie about what occurred. I mean, she literally laid on the ground crying, admitting what she did. And she's not accused, again, of intentionally killing this man. This was, you know, an incident that occurred. And, uh, you know, the question is whether or not it rose to the level of criminal culpability. So, I, you know, that statement in of itself, in my mind, does not, does not get her in prison. Yeah, I don't think that gets her in prison as well. I mean, she was emotional at the moment. She broke down. I think her overall reaction to the situation could be problematic. That it was so unprofessional. Um, I think it just all plays into a narrative by the state. So that's a possibility. But at the end of the day, those particular statements, I don't think, are that damning. Yeah. All right, Jamie, I, I want to thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Truly appreciate you joining me. I want you to have a fantastic holiday with your family and enjoy it. Take the chance to just uh, relax and rest and, 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 and depressurize. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. You do the same, okay? Yep, and we'll see you on the other side. All right.